It's true. A stormy pattern is finally coming back to the Northeast. In this video, we're going to talk about if that finally means an end to the big snow drought along the I-95 corridor or not, and then break down the cold that could follow not one, but two of these systems that could also bring snow to parts of the South. What's going on, guys? If you're new here, I'm meteorologist Jonathan Kegas, and we talk and track all things weather. I would love to know what the weather is doing, where you are tuning in from. Post that in the comment section below. Don't forget to include your location. We're going to start with where we stand so far this winter. Your eyes are clearly drawn to the western half of the United States, just getting crushed, especially in the Sierra Nevadas where you see this bright yellow color now picking up more than 300 inches of snow for the winter. A lot of that coming in the last few weeks with the extremely active pattern with those atmospheric rivers. Your eyes may also be drawn to the lack of snow. On the eastern seaboard, specifically in the big cities along the I-95 corridor, Philadelphia, New York City. In New York City, we are still waiting for our first measurable snowfall of the season. Big pattern change is underway. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to get crushed with snow through the I-95 corridor, but we'll at least have a shot. More on that in a second, though. Here is the pattern change as we take a look at the upper level pattern, this big ridge in the jet stream now affecting the western part of the country. That's going to warm us up in British Columbia, then also the Pacific Northwest. The other thing that we need here is this dip in the jet stream to help a storm get going right along the east coast. So we have two of those things in play here to help us generate a storm. I want to show you over the next few days as we get into the third week of January. This is now January 21st, so getting into the weekend, we have the makings here of a little snowstorm brewing in parts of the southern plains. Maybe some snow developing in Colorado into Kansas. This is the start of storm number one of two, and if you're watching from the I-95 corridor and waiting for snow, it's going to be storm two that really has at least the shot. I still think it's an outside shot, but again, more on that coming up. You see here as we take this into the future, the storm really starts to ramp up. The blue indicates where we have the snow. Not the right location this time for a big snowstorm along the I-95 corridor. There is the center of low pressure hanging around Cape Cod. It does bring some very heavy snow to places like interior New England again, interior Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, upstate New York. Uh, northern Pennsylvania, we are in play as well. I do want to fast forward real quick to show you what we're going to be talking about for the rest of the video. The thing that is generating those big time snow maps and posted all over social media is the second one coming towards the 25th, 26th, 27th time frame of January. So we're going to fast forward now and you see this developing system. Here's our shot for a little bit of sneaky snow in parts of the south. This is going to be on January 24th and 25th. Here is our developing system. Enough cold air to get at least some mixed precip into places like Arkansas, maybe Oklahoma and Texas again. So stay tuned for that. But as we take this further in time, now we're looking at the 25th into the 26th. This run of the European, and again, it is never a good idea to look at single model runs this far out. I just want to show you this for perspective here. The low, again, not in a good spot for the Northeast. But interior New England, places like Toronto, Ottawa as well getting crushed. Parts of Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, all back under the gun with that second storm. So it will turn stormy. I just don't know that it's going to be beneficial for us in New England. So I mentioned about single model runs. They're a no-go. We are now going to be looking at the percentage from more than six inches of snow as designated, as forecast by the European ensembles. So we're taking those initial conditions from uh, going into these ensembles here and then taking the mean. So this is through the first snowstorm. And you see here, again, there are very minimal probabilities in and around New York City, again, I'm not banking on any kind of snow here, at least big accumulating snow with that first storm coming up. You see, though, where we do get crushed. Again, a high probability here for more than six inches of snow from New York, upstate New York, uh, interior New York, getting into New Hampshire, Vermont, Maine, New Brunswick, even parts of Nova Scotia getting in on that snow. Watch what happens as we move forward into the second round. So now this is going to be through Friday, January 27th. Again, it's going to be that interior focus through northern Pennsylvania, 
into interior Massachusetts, into Maine. We do have slightly higher probabilities here in Philadelphia, maybe like 10%. Same deal around New York City. But still, I ultimately think we're going to miss out again on crushing snow. One of those big nor'easters that, if you love snow, that you all know and love. I do want to show you again the ensemble forecast. These are actually taking those percentages now and putting these into some numbers. So this is going to be through the first storm. This is the European ensemble members. And again, just like what the probability suggested, big time snows through interior New England. Boston, we may have a shot to get clipped by that first one, but I do think that's going to be a little further to your west. Again, the theme is interior. Now I want to take you further out again, adding the second snowstorm into the equation. And again, the European ensembles are not on board with crushing the I-95 corridor. Maybe a little bit of accumulation of snow into New York City, into southeast Pennsylvania. But by and large, again, it's interior New England and then up through Maine that's going to be under the gun for that secondary push of snow. Two snowstorms are coming. Again, I think they're going to be focusing with the bigger totals anyway inland. I want to show you again specifically focusing on that secondary one because I think the first one almost looks like a slam dunk that it is going to be interior just to the west of I-95 and then through Maine. But this is the ensemble. This is the GFS now looking at the potential low center of low pressure locations with that second storm through January 25th and 26th. Note there's a lot of L's on your screen. That's, again, the different ensemble members picking up where that center of low pressure could be. The mean here is this green color, and that's not good news, again, for big snows through the I-95 corridor. To get the jackpot snow totals with these big snowstorms that occur, you want that low right here. And most of the ensemble members are way to the west, are inland. If you have a storm track here, that's going to crush this area. Maybe a little bit further towards Boston, maybe northwest New Jersey as well. But by and large, New York City, Long Island, Philadelphia, Cape Cod, we miss out on those big ticket totals going forward. One of the reasons for that is just because that big ridge out west is just not in the right spot. Again, we're focusing on that second storm again because the first one looks like that one's already, I don't want to say set in stone, but there's pretty high probabilities that that does impact interior New England. So we're going to fast forward out to the 26th. And as we take this out into the 25th, 26th, again, here's our upper low. It's drifting up into the Great Lakes. Again, that is no-go for snow. One of the reasons for that is because our ridge is right here. To get good snows along the I-95 corridor, you want that ridge to be right about here. It doesn't look like a huge displacement on the map, but we call it the Boise Ridge for a reason. You want that to be pretty much right smack dab over Boise, Idaho. That'll help to bring that trough further down and then move the low further out over the coast that's going to be the upper low in that rendition so nonetheless we have pieces i don't think it's lining up to completely crush the i-95 quarter but i do think two big snowstorms are coming for interior new england there's still some time for that to change but we do need to have significant changes on the back end downstream in the western united states Speaking of the western United States, behind storm number one coming in on the 23rd, 24th, we do get some cold back. This is going to be the anomalies now kind of plunging down the Rockies. We've been talking about this again with that ridge out west that does allow some of the cold to kind of dislodge out of Canada and then come back down. So you see these brighter blues and purples again indicating the lower than normal temperatures, the colder than normal temperatures expanding through as we get into, again, the 24th, 25th, 26th, putting some numbers behind that. And again, this is not going to be as significant of a cold outbreak as to what we saw leading up to Christmas and then as those first couple of days after Christmas. Nonetheless, though, it's still going to get a little cold. So this is now going to be, let's fast forward to January 22nd, 
We have temperatures in the single digits into the teens, sneaking all the way down into New Mexico again, the panhandle of Texas. Taking this further out into Monday, January 23rd, we still have single digits and teens all the way into Arizona, New Mexico, Nevada. Certainly, that's where the core of that chill settles in, right through the Rockies. And then that is, start, that is going to start to plunge east a little bit further. You see that cold front there. You see where it's still warm. Hanging out in Florida, at least not for long, though. But that's going to be January 24th and 25th. Still hanging on to some warmth in South Florida. But then the big chill spreading through a lot of the country. For my snow lovers along the I-95 corridor, can this change? Absolutely it can. Do me a favor though. Don't pay attention to the model numbers that are out there right now. The European especially has been giving the big totals to the big cities and then taking them away again. It's in that full windshield wiper effect. What we need to focus on now is the upper level pattern. That's the most important part. And then looking at some of the ensemble trends, both of those will favor though interior New England just to the west of the I-95 corridor at this time. Again, going to watch those trends over the next several days. But when you see those big ticket totals through the big cities, just keep the excitement in check for right now until we get some extra evidence that we are going to see that possibility. Because right now, I'm favoring the big cities missing out on at least the big totals once again. Thank you so much for watching this. If you like the conversation we had today, if you love talking about the weather, tracking the weather, please hit subscribe. Again, we're going to continue to keep up on this system, and we will catch you next time.